I'm currently a senior lecturer in sociology at the University of York. And really what led me into this particular career path now was getting, very fortunately, funding to be able to study for a PhD in the UK. So you might be able to tell from my accent, I'm originally from South Africa. So it was really the funding that enabled me to set off on the career trajectory I'm undertaking now. So I didn't actually decide I'm going to become an academic. I decided I'm going to do further research through a PhD. And then through that, it just became the obvious next step. I guess in a way, I often joke that it was the least thought out major life decision because I didn't really choose it. Teaching really, I suppose, is the most immediate reward because it's so face to face, it's interpersonal, it's seeing the consequences of what you do immediately there and then when you support a student. I'm very much allowed in the particular career I've got to deliver teaching that's based on my own research. So there's actually a real interplay between those two things and being able to take things that you know about from quite a, a kind of in-depth way and convey that in a classroom is really exciting and I think that's particularly because you're not just teaching out of a textbook, you are teaching from your own research experience and practice. I was working on a project report and in a way people think the report writing is the boring part but suddenly patterns emerged out of the spreadsheet data and I can remember phoning my colleague who I was working with and saying we found something and that excitement is really the thing that keeps you going when otherwise you feel you're juggling what might be quite a lot of you know sort of admin burden. I think the most challenging aspect of my career is really the level of multitasking. You're expected to be a researcher, you're expected to be a teacher, and you're also expected to be in one way or another involved in um, things like managerial type roles, committees, um, administrative roles, that kind of thing. And so the tough part is getting the balance right. Having some form of backup or support around the finances is probably even more crucial than if you're a home student. Primary tip there is if it looks like you're going to struggle financially, start sooner rather than later in terms of looking for alternative sources and seek advice from your supervisor. I managed to secure small amounts, but they were additional amounts from various sources. And that's about being a proactive researcher really around your funding sources because they're not always that easy to find. So other advice I would suggest to international students is to think about where you actually want to have your career after the PhD itself. So in my case, I actually decided I was going to stay on in the UK and was able to. And I had a, a close friend who came out to the UK having done her PhD in South Africa and then went into academia in the UK and didn't have the range of networks that I'd built up through doing the PhD in the UK. So I think there is a kind of question mark there over how you plug yourself into the relevant career networks in the country where you're choosing to go on to do your career. So during my lectureship, I actually chose to get involved in quite a lot of admin and leadership roles within the department. And I think that really played a role in being able to put together a strong application for promotion to senior lecturer. I kind of jumped at small opportunities like being part of small subgroups of our department research committee and our department teaching committee. And I think that helped both in terms of learning lots of different skills, but also again, kind of, I suppose, getting plugged into lots of different networks within the university. So I think really the primary transferable skill I would recommend for anyone going into academia is the ability to juggle between different tasks. and the ability to kind of hold multiplicity in your head pretty much all the time. And this is a cliche, but it's really true. The ability to say no, I am not good at it. And it has at times left me utterly exhausted and overextended. So often the advice to PhD students is take every opportunity that comes your way because you never know what it's going to lead to. And I think that's true to a point but also recognizing which of those opportunities is most likely to actually lead in the direction you want to go in and to be able to learn how to prioritize so that ultimately getting the balance between the cliche, the, the balance between work and home life is actually practically manageable. Um, so I know there are all the other things, you know, good per people skills, good communication, good ability to present, all of that is so true. But I think if you can't get the multitasking right and you can't get the balance right, 
it's just too easy to burn out. I think the thing about academia is it's usually experienced as a calling and a kind of vocation. And I experience it that way. But that means that it can become very wrapped up in your sense of who you are in the world. So managing to get a balance in who you are between the academic and the life beyond that, I think leads to a more sustainable career. So basically, top tip, find that balance somehow. And second top tip, make sure that you're really speaking with the PhD supervisor about opportunities and, and how to manage those within your particular discipline.